to uh, give a brief overview of what this talk is about, if you know Django, great. You know, this is, you know, everything's going to be right on for you. But if you're interested in just, you know, the general framework for, you know, how do, how do you actually apply these, you know, how do you actually apply some of these methods to developers? You know, if I'm a DBA, what is my developer who's using Postgres actually thinking? Um, and even if you're just interested in ORMs and the whole debate about, you know, how useful they are, how not useful they are, how they're convenient, how they drive DBAs crazy, how we have this whole NoSQL movement. Um, I'm not really going to be getting into the, the semantics of that, but I just think there's, there's some fairly cool concepts in here. So what motivated me to go down this path? Well, I love Postgres. I've been using it for a long time. I'm definitely not as good as a lot of the people here at it, but you know, it just, it's just a great technology, and I really enjoy using it. And I actually like writing SQL. You know, it's not, it might not always be the easiest for certain problems I'm solving, but I enjoy it. But I'm actually a web developer. I've been doing that for a long time, too. And you know, I love using ORMs. I love using tools that make it really quick for me to develop applications. Because especially when you're consulting, it's good to have a nice throughput of uh, projects to get done. Um, what drives me the craziest, though, is when I'm doing something with my ORM. And you know, let's say I want, you know, there, there's this great data type in Postgres I want to take advantage of. You know, I, I want to use an array for something. And I just can't do it. I can't do it easily. I have to write you know, all these hacks. And you know, eventually it gets to the, you know, it gets to the time, the time convenience trade-off that if I'm spending so much time doing this, it will actually be worth it if I have you know, a particular deadline to meet. So I guess the array is the perfect example because, look, it's easy to represent in Postgres. You know, I'm using, you know, in Python, it's very easy to represent. I mean, just about any programming language, this is you know, the most, one of the most fundamental, complex data types that there are. I mean, it's you know, one of the earliest things we learn. Yet, you know, I can't, you know, I can't just do this straight out of the box with the Django ORM. You know, I try to assign you know, some sort of, you know, some lot of numbers in an array to my object and save it. You know, it's going to crash and burn. And then I end up just, you know, writing, you know, some crazy, you know, I, I have to get into the cursors and I, you know, I have to, you see, I have to do all my string interpolation and it's just, you know, it's just not fun. Then I need to make sure I'm dealing with SQL injections, which fortunately most RMs will help you deal with. Um, yeah, I did do that in this code. So that's not fun. But fortunately, Active Record's already solved all this for us. Uh, Active Record is the ORM that's used by Rails. And they have this method called serialize, where you can take any data type, and it serializes it, and it puts it into your database, and you're all set, and you're done. The problem, well, there's, there's actually a few problems with it, but the problem, the, one of the fundamental problems is that it's only one way. If I actually go to look at that method in my, in my table, if I look at the row, it's going to be in some sort of like YAML hybrid format. And, you know, I mean, I mean, you can also, I mean, you can set it to be like in JSON or text or whatever, whatever representation you want, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not that useful. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting any benefit, you know, using Postgres with this data type. So, I mean, that's not necessarily a fault of active record. It just means I need to do a little extra work as a developer in order to be able to take advantage of all these features. But how easy is it for me in certain frameworks? I mean, I can tell you with Active Record, whenever I've tried to extend functionality, I mean, especially data types, it's just, it's a nightmare. And I, I, mean, I don't mean to pick on it, but it's just, you know, even something, I, date, the, doing the date time example that I have, I'm sorry, the timestamp example that I have, I mean, that was relatively easy, but that was actually going through all of like the Active Record base code to find out exactly how they were mapping data types. And there was like actually two locations they were doing it. I'm actually I'm speaking about Active Record 238 for the, the Rails people in the room. I know that things have changed since then, sort of. But still, even when I did this, I didn't always get all the benefits that I wanted. And I, I remember I, I had some sort of type conversion issue. I can't remember what it was. It was about a year ago. But the point remained that you know if I, if I want to extend the data type, I mean, it, it'd be a really ugly hack. Fortunately, you know, not all tools are the same. And this is where Django is very useful. And the reference, that's Django Reinhardt, who it's named after. And if, I'm, if I find I'm going way too quickly in this talk, I have some of his music, and we can easily go over um, what innovations he made as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sa I'm saving my best comic material for the, the late show. So Django is extensible. It's, 
that's one of the things that really attracted me to it. I mean, I've only been using Django for maybe a year now. now I, I really do come from a Ruby background. I did, I did Rails for about five years. And what really attracted me to it is just how, you know, they give you the core framework to work with, but just basically it's like, look, if we don't have something that you don't have, here's some sort of API or here's some sort of way just to extend it. I mean, I thought that was great. It's like, wow, you know, you sort of have built this in a way that you don't have all the solutions right off the bat, but you're going to allow me to, you know, contribute to it. And it might not end up in the core library, but that's fine. It's for an ad hoc problem I'm solving. This is perfect. So, like I said, it's pretty well documented. And usually at some point in the docs, it still says, look, if, you know, if you need to learn more, just look at the code. The code's fairly easy to follow. But, you know, I, you know, I think this is, you know, this is one of those more interactive talks that, you know, we're going to demo some stuff. We're going to see how it actually works. And w why don't we build some data types today? So let's start supporting arrays. So the method I always like to use, um, usually in this order, depending on how busy I am during the day, is first, I need to understand what data type I want in Postgres. And fortunately, Postgres also has excellent documentation, so I just look it up. I look at the data type, I see what functions it has, I see all its nuances, I see how it's represented in the database. And usually, you know, it's not, it's not too bad. Then, I need, you know, I need to make sure I understand how we're represented in Python. Well, it's an array that's really easy. I mean, that's a built-in data type. But perhaps if I'm using a more, you know, complex custom object, you know, let's say I want to do an XML tree, which I haven't tried doing yet, but actually I think Django supports XML. Um, or like something like HStore, you know, it has a little bit more of a tricky representation. We, you know, we're probably going to need to create some sort of custom Python class or use it as text, but that's not as useful. Then we actually write the adapter between uh, Django and Postgres. And that's the fun part, and that's what we're going to get into today. And especially because, you know, Django is a web framework, you know, we also need to make sure it's easy to represent on the front end, you know, when we're dealing, you know, when we're taking in user input. So some of the key methods, um, the first one is DB type. These are all inherited from uh, models.field, which is how you're going to uh, derive your, your custom field class. Um, DB type basically, I mean, it's basically, you know, what it's actually called in the database. So like integer is int integer. Array, you have, you know, your special array syntax. I mean, that's basically what's using what's doing its DDL. To Python, that's, that's, you know, it sounds exactly what it is. You know, you're taking your, your data type from your SQL format, I'm sorry, from your Postgres format, and you're mapping it into Python. Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, get prep value, that's the other way. You know, probably that's not as intuitive of a name, but, um, you know, it's the other way around. I, and I included this one on here, though it's not really as applicable since we're targeting just Postgres, but, you know, different databases have different representations for the same data type. So, I mean, I think it's fairly obvious in this room that, you know, Postgres and MySQL uh, store time formats very differently. Um, so, you know, you would have to do, like, different, you know, syntax, you know, you have to convert your syntax a little bit uh, differently based upon what you were using. So, let's start with step one. Uh, Postgres integer arrays. Simple. And we can also add limits to it. Uh, in the example I'm going to use, I'm just going to say, you know, we're, we're just going to do infinitely big integer arrays. And actually, perhaps an extension we'll write off of this is, you know, let's, let's make them limited. Python. Okay, this is, yes, this is easy. But actually, I did add one caveat here, which I'm not dealing with, which is, because you can store any kind of data type in your Python array, we need to make sure we sanitize the data uh, whenever, uh, whenever we are saving to the database. Otherwise, we'll get errors. So now, let's write an extension. And uh, this is kind of unreadable on purpose, so I don't expect you to be able to see everything on this slide. But um, this is pretty much it. Now, this was, I found this is a little bit more of a complex extension because, because you know, we, I did have to go through pretty much, you know, this entire process of, you know, going back and forth. We're going to see that some extensions are actually a little bit easier because Django or Python is smart enough to know, oh, no, based upon this data type, I'm just going to map it to, you know, this already existing class. Um, but, you know, the, the best way is to go through it step by step. So, first, you know, just like, you know, any uh, Python class, you know, you're, we're inheriting from models.field, so we do that declaration. 
Now, there's some uh, meta information you can provide, like a description that's good for your documentation. Um, so the meta class is actually interesting. That's actually what allows you to call the to Python like uh, get prep value properly. Um, I, I'm a little shaky on, on the the Django internals for that. I mean, that's just based upon my experience. But um, there was one case where I mean, pretty much you need to include the, include this in all of your extensions. There's one case I think it was with enumerated types where having that in uh, gave me some issues. Um, I forget the exact scenario, but generally you want to have uh, the models that subfield based there, and the Django docs has a good explanation why. And it's basically, it has to do with uh, calling uh, the two Python method. Um, we're not doing anything special in our init method, so we just, you know, we're just passing it back up, saying, "All right, you know, call super." But um, in fact, in fact, I don't even think I need that. Why did I have it there? So DB type, fairly obvious. You know, it's an integer array. Um, so the mapping. This is where we have fun. And this is where um, you probably spend most of your time debugging and coding, playing around with things. So let's go, let's go from the database to Python first. So let's look at the to Python method. Now first, what I, first I'm checking, you know, for whatever reason, let's say we already, you know, we, the value is the value that is being stored by the field. So let's say it's already, you know, for some reason we call to Python accidentally and it's already in a list representation, you know, we should just send it back. You know, it, ha it might happen during like a validation process or some other, some other magic, you know, in a, in a Django request lifecycle. But if it's either in a string or Unicode type and actually the Unicode is very important to check for that because uh, that's how Django likes to pass around strings. That actually burned me once. Um, it's already in that format and there's nothing there. We're going to return none. That's basically our representation of null. Otherwise, you know, we, need to, we need to parse out the, the, the syntax that Postgres gives us for uh, representing an array. And ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to map it. We're going to convert all of them to integers and you know, put it into an array. Now again, like I said, like I warned, I'm not doing any type checking. So if somehow you put in, uh, actually, you shouldn't be able, well, because it's coming from Postgres, you won't be able to get bad data in there. So you know, all the integers should map properly. Um, but on the other way around, there's, you know, I'm not doing uh, too much uh, sanitization on this. So let's go the other way around. You know, we've done, you know, let's say we've performed a web request, or you know, we're, we're playing around with the data in the console. And is not a number allowed. Oh, um, well, in Postgres, it's null. Um, for NAND, I've not seen NANDs. Yeah, NANDs are, yeah, that would be floating. Um, it's okay. Yeah, we're, we're just sticking to integers for now to avoid uh, some of those issues. Alrighty, so going the other way. So we're in, the, you know, we're in the Django Python world. We're either doing something on the command line. We're taking a web request in. So we go to save. So first we check to see if we're already, you know, if we're already in the list format. And that's probably because we're doing something from the command line. So first, we, we want to convert it to a string. I guess that's sort of me. I, I'm cheating a little bit by doing that because you know, we, get the nice, we get the nice array. It's, it's the same exact syntax. It's just you got quotes around it. And then I can parse, I can parse things out pretty easily. And essentially, I'm just substituting, you know, bra brackets for brackets. And then, you know, I return it. It's in the proper format. But, you no, know, let's say, let's say, you know, it came from a rub request, or I already have a string, and I haven't, you know, I haven't properly uh, played around, you know, I haven't properly sanitized it yet. Well, you know, let's see, let's see what the type is. And actually, I think I found out, um, in this case, this was one of those issues that I, like I was trying to describe before, where you probably already handled it, but for some reason, the method got called again. Um, so basically, if nothing, uh, this one, actually, this line was very important because let's say I'm submitting from like the admin form and I decide, you know, I clear out the value and I'm allowing nulls to be stored in the column. That makes sure that I'm not, you know, uh, it stores it properly and it doesn't like pass in garbage data. Um, I did have that issue. Actually, it wasn't garbage data. It just basically broke horribly. So that's pretty much it, unless you're using South, which you should be, because it's a very good migration tool. And I probably will say it's the best migration tool I've used. 
Though a uh, big plus for Rails having migrations built in uh, by default. That was a uh, that's definitely a lifesaver. But you know, South isn't aware of all these custom types, so you have to let them let it know that it's available. So it's it's a pretty easy method. Um, and you basically, the, the way you name it is based upon where you, you're storing your custom type in your, in your project tree. That's all it is. So what was important, what I did with the two Python method, I think is fairly important, especially in this case, where I'm using a native type like arrays, where you know, the benefit we're getting is that we're mapping between arrays, you know, Python arrays and Postgres arrays. That doesn't really work when you're dealing with form data or web data because you know, everything's a string, ultimately. What's nice is, you know, as those of you familiar with Django knows, that it has this very uh, intricate, complex form library that actually encapsulates a lot of logic that you don't need to deal with. So it's actually it's pretty easy to make complex forms. That's another, that's another reason why it's very hard for me to go back to Rails. But what, what I did is basically I created a custom, a custom form field which encapsulates a lot of the logic that I need to, you know, to handle some of the conversions and some of the, the data sanitization. So here, this is, this is actually in the, uh, our custom model field. And it basically says, look, you know, when, when you're running in the, the Django admin tool, just make sure you use this form to parse and handle all the data. So separately, I defined this in, in another class. Um, Sorry, in another class file, where sorry, in another module file. I'm still I'm still getting my Ruby Python syntax down down pat. Um, and you know, basically, you know, I call you know, I do the the usual. Okay, you know, I'm inheriting from you know the base form field. I got to make sure you know it's initialized properly. Um, this comes from both of these methods come from uh, the form from the form API, and that's the subject of another talk. But what's important to see here is that not only am I preparing the value for it being inserted into the database or con you know, converting it to the appropriate type, but I'm also doing my validations here. And actually, this is where I check to see, oh, is this an integer or are you sending me like, some garbage data? And you know, of course, which is really important when you're coming from an, an HTML field where people can enter any sort of information in and, you know, or, and you know, basically just cleans it all up. So let me uh, let me demo a bit because that's more fun. So I created um, just to sh show you what's up my sleeve. I created this demo application that has about no real world value at all. Um, I don't I don't even have a random number generator for my Lotto class, but. This is an example of some of the custom fields I've used. So the first one we're going to play with is Lotto. Pretty simple. It has an integer array field. And first, let's, let's look at the command line. Um, So here are my Powerball numbers. Not really. I usually just do quick pick. <laughs> 